Hey, everybody. It's Claudia Heuser, your host here for episode five of Fired Up Live. And let me tell you, I told you these were going to keep getting better and better and more interesting and more fun. But we've really got an awesome surprise for you guys today. And if you've already been following along on social media, you know who our special guest is. It's going to be an awesome Fired Up Live. So thank you for joining us. I hope you're tuning in from home. You've got your friends and family sitting around, maybe making some delicious food on the fire disc tonight. I'm going to just kick things off with a little welcome song for you. Hopefully you're in some good company who will sing along with you to this one. It's called Country Roads. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. Life is older there. Older than the trees, younger than the mountains, blowing like a breeze. Country roads take me home to the place I belong. West Virginia, Mountain Mama. Take me home, country roads. All my memories gathered round her. Miners lady, stranger to blue water. Dark and dusty. Painted on the sky, misty taste of moonshine, a teardrop in my eye. Country roads take me home to the place I belong. West Virginia, Mount Mama. Take me home, country roads. I hear a voice in the morning. She calls me. The radio reminds me of my home far away. And driving down that road, I get a feeling that I should have been home yesterday yesterday country roads take me home to the place I belong West Virginia my mountain mama Take me home, country roads. Won't you take me home, country roads? Thank you so much for listening. I just love that song and Thankfully, so does everybody else. That was our first song we did for Hoiser Country Monday that hit over a million views. So they, we thank John Denver for that one. And it's such a beautiful song. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. We're going to get tonight's uh, big thing started up here. I first want to tell you about some awesome lucky winners we had from last time. We had Joel Coons and Raymond Madrid and Audrey Sherrill. Those were our big winners for the Fire Disc Cooker, the Fire Disc Swag Pack, and the Hoiser Country Blend Prize Pack. And it's just amazing. Congratulations, you guys. And everybody has a chance to win every single time we do Fired Up Live. All you have to do, it's really hard. It's very tricky, so pay close attention. All you have to do is leave a comment below on this video. 
whatever you're thinking, where, where you're watching from, if you're enjoying it, if you're excited about the guest, whatever you want to say, leave us some love below and you'll be entered to win, like I said, fire disc cooker, swag packs, all the good stuff. And uh, we're just excited to give out some more cool goodies. So comment, comment, comment. All right, let's get to tonight's very, very special guest. I'm so excited. This is going to be an awesome time and something that I think is going to be fun for all of us to be part of tonight. We have somebody you're probably going to know, which is super cool. And uh, he has starred in the films The Hitcher, Grandview USA, Secret Admirer, uh, a little movie called Red Dawn, and even The Outsiders. He has also appeared in Gettysburg, The Amazing Spider-Man, Justice League, Animal Kingdom, and you've definitely seen him in Criminal Minds and about a million episodes of Southland. So let's give a big, beautiful, warm welcome to our special guest tonight, American actor and director, and my friend, C. Thomas Howell. All righty, look who it is. <laughs> uh, first of all, I love that guitar. Thank you so much. It's my new baby. Amazing. She's Amazing. still looking for a name, so we're going to keep that open today. In due time. During this. In due time. And yes. Country Roads, the, beautiful. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. It's a crowd favorite. But you know, favorite. I'm a huge fan anyway. I, I, I mean, just whether you're doing a cover of one of your own things, I, I can't get enough. So I'm a huge fan. Thank you very much, as am I. Of you. Let's, <laughs> let's get some more movies going because I'm ready to I watch know. them. Get COVID, go away. <laughs> I know, I know. It's been crazy. So I bet that uh, some of our followers here are starting to wonder how we met and what is going on. So let's just fill everybody in. Well, first of all, um, I'm a fan of country music. You know, I, I come from a, a rodeo background. My father's a cowboy. I was raised a rancher. And somehow you came across my feed on social and I plugged in and started listening. Awesome. And yeah, I, I just really fell in love with your work and um, kind of reached out on a whim just to let you know that I thought you and your team were doing a great job and um, connected with your manager, Tony. And Tony and I, I we, you know, over the last few months have became pretty Good You're friends. Pretty tight. You're like brothers. And now. you know, I mean, I'm I'm a big fan <laughs> of the coffee. So really Thank I just you. butter him up for, you know, the coffee. Exactly. Uh, that's, that's really that's, what that's it what all happens. comes down to. You're just looking for that's, coffee. That's it. <laughs> I, I'm I'm looking for coffee. And and you know, Tony and I developed a friendship. And um I'm involved with a with a charity called This Time Tomorrow Foundation, which um raises a about three or four hundred thousand dollars a year, and we um, give that to people who are suffering and dealing and recovering and surviving um, cancer and all different forms of cancer. And it started out um, out of Milwaukee with a good friend of mine named Corey Zimmerman, who founded it um, for a friend who was diagnosed and was given three months to live. And he wrote um, a song for him called "This Time Tomorrow," mm -hmm. and. Lo and behold, that gentleman is still alive today, thank God. Yeah. But Amazing. we have developed and formed um, a foundation and we raise money every year at a special gala. And, and at that gala, we record and have re-recorded re this song, I think 12 or 13 times. Uh, different people like Jason Mraz, uh, Jada Marcus, uh, Mai Bloomfeld. Some just brilliant artists have come in and recorded this song and help. They've all helped us raise hundreds and hundreds and well, millions of dollars at this point. So incredible. It's amazing. The song was actually retired. And I don't even really know. I, I don't know how much you're aware of this. The song was sort of set aside and we were, everybody was sort of done recording it. But I, as we have already discussed, um, <laughs> fell in love with your voice and just really wanted this recorded by you. And I 
approached you too and you were open to it and yeah, it's crazy this is where like, i can hand it off to you because it, i was you getting know, we the story afterwards like everybody else who's finding out now like i didn't know the song was retired you know he told us about this incredible foundation and shared with us this song and we just kind of fell in love with the message behind it and i thought it was so cool that people have redone it for years and years and years and it always sounds so different so this is this is right up our alley like we love this so we're like i think we could do a pretty different little spin on this and um so the fact that you wanted to hear my version of it was so so cool and uh tony and i took a listen to it and instantly felt like a different type of feel for the song. Like it went a little bit waltzy and that's a sneak mm-hmm. peek because nobody's heard the song yet, our version of sure. it. So um, well, we're only a couple of weeks amazing. out from it, from it being available, I believe. Yeah. And I'm not clear on this, this sort of October date versus the date of the gala. I think <laughs> there will be some music made available, but the premiere of our event is November 14th. Exactly. So we're going to have something pretty huge. This virtual version of the gala is going to go live on November 14th and everybody's yeah. going to get to watch it and see. At the, I, I believe at this time tomorrow.com, you can get that information, go to this time tomorrow.com. Yeah. Um, that's the website that will give you information to the foundation and also information to the show. Is it .org? Is it .org? .org. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. Thank you. This time tomorrow you, you. .org, everybody. Yeah. This time tomorrow.org, of course. Thanks for Perfect. that catch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and 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 at this time tomorrow.org, it will supply the information and I believe explain the links and who will be performing because we have some great artists coming in and everybody's going to be performing from home or studios and and mm-hmm. I think you're doing two or three songs. I'm not sure, but yeah, we're going to leave a some... surprise. I, okay, I okay, like okay. to surprise everybody, so they're well, probably you know getting really no surprises sick of it. If I'm in the house, right? So you better just move along. That's true. Right now. He's just gonna, loose cannon, <laughs> just going to tell us all everything. So yeah, just a little bit more background on this time tomorrow, so everybody kind of understands. Um, they do random acts of kindness. It's incredible, and you can actually on this time tomorrow.org go on and nominate a family or a person um, to receive one of these random acts of kindness, which is typically a monetary donation. And it's amazing. They go right to the house and I'm sure it's usually on video and everybody's reaction is always um, from what I've seen. It's, it's, just, it's, it's, it's hard. the most moving it, thing. You've been really there. Is. You've done it. I've done them. I've done yeah. them. And you know, um, it, 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 I've been around long enough that I've done them with people and become friends who have fought and beaten the odds and, you know, have surrendered eventually. And, and it's, it's such a, it was really difficult for me at first, but Mm -hmm. I appreciate the connection now. My good friend, Joe Laval, who, who stared at death for five long years and he was given months when I first met him and he, he passed earlier this year and that affected me a lot because I spoke to him quite often and we were, we were actually friends and I spoke yeah. to him two days before he passed yeah. and just told him what an example he had set for all of us and how thankful I was for him. And his response was, I'm not sure I can, I can live up to, to the credit and the love that you all have shown me over the past five years, but thank you. And it just moved me so deeply yeah. and we all have friends and we all, I'm, you know, my publicist is Jeff Ballard. I'm at his house right now. You know, I just spent the past six weeks taking him to chemo every day. Wow. And um, he's he's battling and fighting. And um, it's just, it's so close to all of us. And Absolutely. Way too close. I, too close. And so, you know, for everybody to spend a moment together on November 14th to actually celebrate the survivors and raise awareness for for what's happening because there's more to it than just fighting cancer people lose jobs people lose homes people's spouses can't deal with it mm-hmm. and many people are left alone and it's it's a it's not always a happy ending but it's something that needs to be addressed and really uh i appreciate it so much it's it's just sort of it's awakened me to, to, you know, and it's funny, I'm 50 now. When I was younger, I, it, I was more about myself, but now that I'm 50, 
I have a lot more time and a lot more energy and a lot more space in my life to give to other wow. people. And this looks like I have a lot, a lot to look forward void. to there. Yeah, it will happen. I'm telling you, <laughs> you, you won't see as well here, but you'll feel <laughs> more here. Oh. <laughs> well, yes. And another thing, I know this is my first year with the gala and the foundation and everything, but it seems like something that has become super apparent through just what we've done so far is that it's just creating hope. And I just love that feeling of hope. I carry it around with me no matter what I'm doing, where we go. And so for families and people who are dealing with cancer to feel like there's, there's still hope, um, I think that creating more of that is just great. And um, music's a big part of that. So we went down to Nashville recently. I know you guys might have seen some of our videos or, or pictures or whatever. And we tried to channel some new music and some new what would you say new voices uh maybe some voices that you didn't even know sang before uh but we tried to capture some of that in jay demarcus's studio and so tommy uh i don't know that everybody knows that deep down you're actually a country superstar <laughs> a budding wannabe and this is you know, going to be it, like the debut of, of that here today for Fired it, it's, Up Live. It's so. really true. It's really true. I, I don't know if I lost a bet or if I'm just absolutely <laughs> foolish, but, you know, one of the things That's that happened to me, first of, first of all, um, I'm such a fan and I've wanted to play my whole life, but I've always had hangups and, you know, fears or whatever the reasons are that come with it. And, and finally when COVID hit i just picked up a guitar and i said i'm going to do this and uh doing it a few months back i just started playing and i started really seeing doors open up for me and um, um a lot of I, I just received a lot of support and so it's something that i just absolutely love and i i like being the guy i mean i'm not selling records so i i like sitting around a campfire and being able to play a couple of songs and that's where, how i started but like anything else it you know if you're passionate about it it just one thing leads to another and um it's been a really beautiful journey so i've been so grateful it's been really cool i mean when we first started talking about it and stuff and you were like yeah i've kind of been getting into it i got a guitar here i've been playing a little bit um yeah i don't know i'm sure everybody listening right now they can hear you've got the tone the gruff thing going on it's like you got that natural tone to you and with a few you've done a few little vocal lessons here and there and a little bit it's really it's sounding great so well you know that was the thing so i was able to go down and join y'all in nashville and sing a little bit with you and learn a little bit and then you invited me here and said you know would you do something here and i said listen i have no ego why not so you crushed it and I can't wait for everybody know, to hear this because it's not, it's, it's I don't exciting. think it's something you expect. I mean, I want to know a few more things. Let's go back. So before you become a country superstar singer mm. um, and musician, I want to know a little bit about your, your past life here as an actor and just okay. tell me about a few things. Well, first of all, I think you're a little young to really know about my career as a kid but you have have you ever seen the outsiders i have i have i might need a little okay. refreshing but i've okay. said i've literally said my whole life stay gold pony boy like to my friends and i didn't even know and, why like i was that was just part of my just, vocabulary <laughs> now now i know pony boy <laughs> for the real deal exactly yeah, it's uh you know it's it's so cool to be a part of something like the outsiders First of all, it's required reading in about 75% of the schools across America. Yeah. Um, you know, we did that film uh, 30 years ago, maybe 40 years ago now, closer to 40. And it just started a lot of amazing careers. Tom Cruise, Patrick Swayze, um, Diane Lane, Emilio Estevez, Rob Lowe, Ralph Macchio, Matt Dillon, myself. I mean, you know, Francis Ford Coppola directed it. So to come from that for me is um i'm so proud of that and it's uh it, it's the movie kind of holds up every year we get a new batch of crying 13 year olds that are sobbing because johnny's dead and then they cry even harder when they find out pony boy's 53. oh my god would you stop would you stop <laughs> and, yeah it's true. that's awesome and 
And like I said, I think the only reason that we were able to make a connection is because Tony was old enough to dust off his old <laughs> beta Max version of Red Dawn, he, which you we do know have that, that sitting in the studio right now. Actually, could we get that up? Mm-hmm. I didn't even know what the <laughs> beta was. I'm like, what do you mean That's you that. have the beta version? I don't know what that is, but oh yeah, he's so, got it here in the studio. So, what was it like? We have a connection. What was it like working with Patrick Swayze and just so much talent? Well, there we go. So, the so we did. Uh, Patrick and I did three pictures together. We did uh, The Outsiders, and we did a movie called. Grandview USA, which wasn't quite as popular. And then we did a movie called Red Dawn, which I'm thinking 99% of your listeners have a copy of Red Dawn at home or they better, or they're going to go get one right now. That's right. That's right. (laughs) So, you know, he was really, um, one thing I loved about Patrick is that he, he was really like who he was in his movies. He wasn't pretentious. He was grounded. He was from Houston. Um, he come, he come from good stock. His father was a cowboy. His mother was a, was a very serious choreographer, Patsy Swayze. And here's a quick story. Um, she was a dance choreographer on a film called urban cowboy that John Travolta did. And my father was a stunt coordinator on it who, you know, um, there was a lot of mechanical bull riding in that. And, and as I said, my father was a professional bull rider for many years. And so I met Patrick on the set of Urban Cowboy, I think it was probably 77 or 78, way before we ever crossed paths to do The Outsiders together. And lo and behold, a few years later, we didn't know we'd be starring in three pictures together, but um, we met back then in Houston. So it was meant to be with Patrick and I. Um, I'm still in touch with his, with his, um, his former wife, Lisa, who, who is such a sweetheart. And um, we, you know, we had similar lifestyle. Patrick lived on a ranch and had horses and, and, and loved the outdoors. And that's exactly how I live. So we had a lot in common and I miss him dearly. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. He seemed like such a great person and it's so cool that you got to stay friends over the years, like throughout all the movies and everything. Look so at you I, with I your old little, copy uh, of Red Dawn. And I'm just Wolverines. staring at it here. I'm wondering how I'm going to play this later. I don't think I own anything that's going to be able to play <laughs> That's this. hilarious. It's like if, if you've ever seen a cassette. That is well, yes, I've like, seen a cassette. I know, but I that's to have them. The beta version. This that's before amazing. VHS. This that's is really great. The fact amazing. that he has that is embarrassing because you would use that now to like prop up a table or something. Would you stop? Oh my God. No, yeah. he, he was like, Oh, we're talking to see Thomas. Hall. I've got his movies inside. He brings this out. I'm like, <laughs> I was hoping it was a DVD. You know, I could freshen up on some of no. his work. Yeah. This isn't going to get me too far, but I do need to check it out. And, uh, this was a big hit when we were in Nashville cause Jay's son was Dylan obsessed with this movie, right? This was his favorite. Well, first of all, can we just, can I brag for a second? Do you know how many famous people go in and out of Jada Marcus's house? And those kids could probably care less until I rolled in. The <laughs> guy from in. Red Dawn. This was the guy. The, all of the people, of all the people and all the people that have been in that studio, you were it. He comes up and gives me the social distance elbow bump and a Wolverines. I was, I was in heaven. Amazing. Amazing. So do we think we're going to be able to get a little sneak peek here or a big first debut of those beautiful pipes? That's it. We got beautiful pipes to Lord. <laughs> I think I think all the country western singers' jobs are safe from me. Oh um, goodness. Yeah, I can do it because I'm not in front of people. I'm home and I and it's like I'm alone. That's right. It's like practice. Just like That's practicing. It. Just like in your practice. Room. I feel like That's we're practicing. It. So <laughs> of course. Yes, let's, do, let's it. do it. Okay. This is gonna be a good broadcast first here for Fired Up Live. See Thomas Howell. What are you gonna play for us? This is a song uh, by Drake White. Nice. It's called Same Mistake Twice. All right. Let me see if I can wrap my fingers around it for a second here. songs and the cold beer we drank on smoke rings in the night skies good kisses when it's good night it 
was love, she was head, I was head over here. I let me fall, knowing you were hell on wheel. You blew in and you blew out while the horses couldn't slow you down. Should've known I'd never change your mind. Those hot nights I burned them in your curls. I learned them. I earned this heartache for mine. But if I ran into you tonight. I'd make the same mistake twice The part of me loves you And the part of me hates you Hell on my heart, trying to change you. But even though I know how it ends, I do it all again. Girl, I never regret it One time I held the way You blew in and you blew out While horses couldn't slow you down I should have known I'd never change your mind those hot nights of Bundong, when you're cold, I learned on this heartache of mine. But if I ran into you tonight, I'd make the same mistake twice. I'm so sorry that I'm just one person clapping for you because everybody watching right now is cheering you on from home. That was awesome. That was so good. And yeah, I love that you know, song by Drake White. That's so, so great. That was my first time for you. I felt a little tired How did it in go? places. A little you know, tight? I, a little bit tight at times. Mm -hmm. And What was the hardest funny, you know, part? Was it the, was it the vocals or the guitar? Um... I think guitar for me, well, it's an interesting thing because there's definitely a process when you're, when you're a new performer, playing is one thing, singing is another, yeah, putting them to try together. To bridge them at some point and you're just waiting for that magic to happen. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, we, we've, we've discussed and I've talked with Tony. I mean, it's, it's as simple as just trying to, to keep up a, a simple beat with your foot and try to play on that versus just letting it go. I'm, I'm still trying to put the basics together, but the for me it's simple things like if you miss a chord do you sing through it will people know you missed a chord you know when you when <laughs> i you, know a little bit about this one right here <laughs> when you strum a little bit like when i when i miss something slightly i my habit is to over strum the next chord you know exactly. like i'm gonna fix the mistake and yep. you can't you can't do that totally and you realize i've watched a lot of live stuff and now that I'm playing a little bit, you see a lot of mistakes and you do. people and that helps you learn too. Like I don't, I am totally fine now, like completely messing up and just calling on my own self and just being like, Oh my God, I totally messed that up. Like, let me start yeah. that again. And once you realize that that's okay. And people are like, 
they know you're human and they watch you make a mistake and then they feel cool right. about making mistakes. It's like, well, it I just miss, feels I miss, so much like, more my, natural. I, I basically just stomped on a chord and all the mu- <laughs> all, all the sound went away, but I've learned to not panic. And even in this moment, like even though this is the first time I did it, of course I would want it to be perfect and I want it to be great, but that's not, that's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because I really love it. So yeah, yeah, exactly. It takes the pressure off. And it sounded really good. I mean, I've got to tell everybody. So um, obviously you keep saying that you're new and everything. You've been playing around a little bit with the guitar and you're working it out and it's really going well. But um, you got into a vocal booth probably much sooner than the average new singer. And um, when we were down there working in the studio, you got in there all by yourself in the vocal booth and we're all in the control room waiting to hear what comes out. And you killed it. I mean... You just have to take that moment for yourself and take your time. You know, if you're not ready or you're feeling tense, you got to just take a minute and figure out what's going to be best for you and to not try to sing things that aren't you. Well, that was one thing um, I've really learned with working with professionals like yourself and Jay and Tony. And, and it's 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 really about learning what you can do and and. I think enhancing that and focusing on, on that instead totally. of, you know, I know I'm never going to be, you know, the greatest guitarist or the greatest singer, but like I said, there's a lot to that three chords and a truth, you know, the three chords and the truth that, that it's when you're in the moment and you're connecting with somebody, um, music is a, is a, is a really wonderful device for communicating i love country western songs i'm moved by it's country all about western the story music. it's got to be about it, the it story moves me. for us it's yes. always about the lyrics you know it's like i'm never gonna be some crazy guitar player but as long as it's a little something that can support what i'm trying to say or you know i've got like this little quirkiness to my voice that i know not everybody's gonna like and i even used to have a hard time with it you know i do this little mm. like yodely thing it just happens and i used to hate it i was like get rid of this i want to take all the vo- voice that's my favorite I part can to smooth that's it out. my favorite part of your and voice. now it's like the thing you know tony had to open my eyes to that and so some of the things that you might have felt like uncomfortable with in the beginning those might be your thing so you just have to listen to those and realize what they are and even though you might not think that that is like perfect or that's not what the next guy sounds like. It could be the thing that makes your voice yours. So I think you're doing a kick ass job. (laughs) Thank you. Coming from you, that means so much. It's just inspiring. And I just love to, 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 to be open and learn. And I mean, look what you, I mean, seriously, because I've watched you now for a while and COVID changed your trajectory i mean you used to be backed by a pretty like what i would consider a large band maybe six <laughs> members maybe seven i don't know but now you're there with a guitar well i miss yourself. them dearly i miss everybody i of, miss playing of off each other and all that fun stuff too but yeah that definitely now, the sheltering though, in place has switched a few things around and i've had to play a lot more guitar. Glass is on you know right. what i mean it's like yeah. the, the light is on and i feel for me personally because i i love the environment of you and the band, but wow, what a, what a pleasure to have watched what you've gone through these past few months and where you're at. It's just been amazing. Thank you so much. And, um, other than music, I've got to let everybody know that there's also more from C. Thomas Howell that you might not know about. He has shocked the world with his incredible set, a face mask. You guys, the can't go outsiders, the can't go outsiders face masks. Have you seen these <laughs> things? They're all over the internet. They are like the coolest new thing. And I wore them all through the airport and I got a lot of uh, compliments on this bad boy. That's so awesome. yeah. Thank you for that. Claudia. Where can everybody go yeah, find check- these? Well, you can go to staygoldmerch.com. We have, you know, probably five or six different choices and here's a, like a state tough decal yeah the stickers got. are awesome they're like heavy we've got duty. some some stickers and basically the concept uh happened with some of the fans and some of the fan art that came around and um we we decided we'd try to help have a little bit of fun with this mass situation <laughs> so we came up with the can't go outsider series and we put masks on all the greasers and we've got a 
social distancing mask for the socials and and <laughs> it's just been a lot of fun you know Super and we're fun. trying to trying to supply you know a little bit of love a little bit of like we said a little bit of fun for the kids when they go to school and they've, they've really been supportive and who knows how long it'll last but it we've had a good time I think they're awesome and yeah it's like if you gotta wear them you might as well have some fun with it and that's right it's just they're great. So everybody well, should go check a, those out. Where can they find them? Stay gold merch. Stay gold merch.com. So check that out. You guys, I've got to, and I've also got to real get some quick, more circle back real quick to, uh, this time tomorrow.org for the mm -hmm. information about the music that'll be streaming. So you can check it out from home and it's going to be some really great people performing like Claudia and, you. and, and you. Jay Demarcus. I'm going to be there. <laughs> And we sure would like to invite y'all and have you come. Okay. So please, if you have time, November 14th. Yep. And uh, we've got Jake Owen, a little special appearance from Jason Mraz. And um, just just a night of, you know, it's going to be like more than two hours of music, just this live virtual gala with concerts. And um, you'll hear some, I'm sure, very moving and awesome stories. And uh, Corey Zimmerman, the founder, he's he's got some great things to share. So I hope everyone will tune in on November 14th. And we'll be sharing links and all that stuff, too. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. what it, I'm probably going to have to do one more song here to wrap everything up. So since you've been a fan for a while now, can I hear maybe, do you have any favorites? Well, I, I have a few. I may even know some <laughs> that not too many people have heard, including. Whoa, we don't want maybe, to. Yeah, don't tell I, anybody about those. They're they're coming out. What about I, Duke Devlin? Oh, Duke Devlin. I do love know about it. That? They do know a little a, bit about Duke Devlin, but I don't know if they know the song. full story. It's a, it's a song Tony and I wrote about the hippie who never left Woodstock. It's a true story. And. Duke has become a great friend of ours now, and it's uh, really cool to be able to stay in touch with him and kind of share. When we heard what he had to say about Woodstock, we kind of took that into his perspective and put it out as a song, like, through his eyes. So that's what Duke Devlin's on. Now, now, just because I don't know, I, I have heard the song, but is that something that people have heard in the past from you? They have heard a Hoiser Country Monday version of it. So okay, okay. Um, the band and I, we we did like an acoustic. It is going to stay an acoustic song, acoustic style. Wow. It's kind of soft and pretty. Um, but no one has heard the record version of that one. I don't even know if they know that's going to be right. on the record. But I guess for Fired Up Live, we will we will let this one slide. Duke Devlin a great one. is probably most likely going to be on the record. So. Good choice. Good choice. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Claudia. See Thomas Howell. And I what hope, a pleasure. I hope you had fun today and you did I really an awesome job it. playing we'll for see everybody. You down the road, okay. Yeah, we'll see you soon. Don't thank take any so guff from Tony now. <laughs> we'll keep him on his best behavior. <laughs> Bye now. Cheers. That was amazing. I'm so glad we got to talk with C. Thomas Howell. Pretty cool that he wants to hear Duke Devlin. I would love to play this for you guys. Uh, I told you a little bit about what this one's about, but if you haven't heard it before, I want to start by saying that uh, the first time we went to visit a radio station in Bethel, New York, Paul C. Liberto works at this station and he runs the place. He's like the greatest ever. Um, we've been really lucky to become friends with him. And he plays my songs as soon as they come out, as many times as he can. It's just awesome. So we went down to do an interview at this station. And it's in Thunder Country, Thunder 102. And he asked me at the end of the interview, he said, you guys going to get some lunch or something? I, I would love if you... Uh, you took these couple tickets and went over to the Woodstock Museum down the road. And we didn't know we were two steps away from the Woodstock Museum in Bethel Woods. Um, so we took those tickets very excitedly. Couldn't wait to go over there and see it. And before we left the radio station, he said, make sure you keep an eye out for Duke Devlin. 
And I was thinking, hmm, must be the golden retriever running around with a name like that. Okay, well, keep an eye out for Duke. Sounds good. So we get over there, and it was just incredible, this place. If you haven't gotten a chance to go over, hopefully you do at some point because it's really cool. You can just still kind of feel that magic of everything that took place there. And we keep seeing this name, Duke Devlin. It's all over the walls. We keep hearing it. Some of the tour guides mentioned him a couple times. So now I'm starting to think, okay, maybe it's really a person. It's not a dog running around this place. And we're out there riding around on a golf cart, going over the hill where all the concerts took place that summer of 69. And right there on the monument at the bottom of the hill is this gentleman sitting on the monument. So I'm like, oh, he's got to have some some stature here if he gets to sit on that right there. Turns out this was Duke Devlin, and he was he was at Woodstock. He thumbed up from Texas, and he never went home. He just, he's been there ever since, and he's telling everybody the stories and spreading those messages of peace and love that we could all really use right now. And it's been amazing to get to know him over the years, and now we've stayed kind of tight, and we wrote this song from for him kind of through his eyes and got to play it for him. And we gave him the lyrics and everything so he could read along. And it's just been a really special part of my life. So so thank you, Paul C. Liberto, for all of that. And Duke Devlin, this one's always for you. In summer 69, we'll cry in different tears. Bullets were flying. In Vietnam We piled in buses I jumped in some truck To meet up the rebels on the lawn Where the ghosts of my brothers live on and on We gathered and sang all the songs Singing, hey, hey, I don't know your name, but you and me, we were all the same. Well, I'm Duke, Devlin, and I'm sticking around. You can find me here on these grounds. Oh. After the lights go down We danced through the rain Till the men in blue came We thought it was trouble again But to our surprise They were right on our side Hey, just a couple more friends Where the ghosts of my brothers Live on and on We gathered and sang all the songs Singing, hey, hey I don't know your name But you and me, we were all the same well, I'm Duke, Devlin, and I'm sticking around. You can find me here on these grounds long after the lights go down. We got high and love slept under the stars. Woke up and danced again But little did we know We changed all the notes Now the world could sing them together Singing, hey, hey I 
don't know your name But you and me, we were all the same Well, I'm Duke, traveling and I'm sticking around You can find me here on these grounds You can find me here on these grounds Long after the lights go down Long after the lights go down Well, that is a wrap on our fifth episode of Fired Up Live. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you tagged a couple friends. Make sure you leave a comment below because you've got a chance to win a Fire Disc cooker, a Fire Disc swag pack, and even some Hoiser Country Blend coffee. Uh, we're going to send out a little prize pack for you there too. So leave some comments and some love below. Also, feel free to uh, send a note to C. Thomas Howell, who's now diving into his love of music and just decided that it's time. He's always loved to sing and play and he wants to kind of start doing that. So I think that's amazing and he sounded really good. So I hope you'll follow along with that too. We've got so much to come for you from Fire Disc Nation and I can't wait to fill you in on all the great things ahead. So tune in for the next episode of Fired Up Live. I'm your host, Claudia Heuser, and I'll see you next time. In today's world, time with family is more valuable than ever. Meet Fire Disc the original portable propane cooker. It sets up in seconds, fires up fast, and cooks anything you throw at it. Whether it's a quick meal at home or in the great outdoors, Fire Disc has you covered. Take your kitchen outside and enjoy everything that makes good food great. Fire Disc, cooking at home made easy.